Many of them are surviving Victorians, among them none other than Charles Darwin. It's called a flying pendulum escapement. And it was invented by an American in the second half of the 19th century for fun. It doesn't serve any useful purpose. It's just a piece of nonsense to amuse people. You can hear the clicking noise. Yeah, that's when both gears are engaged at once. But how long did this take you to work out and build? The last year. Although I've been working on these gearboxes since I was 20, 30 years ago. Can you make anything mechanical out of Meccano if you think about it hard enough? I think so. Yeah. Oh, the other clever the click is, you don't want it going backwards. You won't go backwards with a ratchet. But there was a time when Meccano fans were cherub-faced youths. Meccano was invented by a Liverpudlian office clerk, Frank Hornby, in 1901. Originally called Mechanics Made Easy, it was designed to allow small boys to build, and therefore understand, their own versions of the machines and structures that made the nation function so smoothly. And this was a cool thing to do. Victorian engineering seemed an immutable. Now, with their fingers bleeding, these boys could safeguard the future with a spanner. Today, this country's greatest Mikado authority is a man called Jim Gamble. Nervously, I approach his unremarkable house in Nottingham, where I'm led to the loft. Still feels like a normal household so far. <laughs> ah, hang on. Up the ladder then, yeah. presumably. Uh, that's ah. it. Oh, my God. No, I wasn't expecting this. I thought you meant it was like a dimly lit attic full of old boxes. Jim even has the pant-wettingly exciting number 10 set. Everything that was great about Britain in a big green box. No, I've gone slightly faint. <laughs> I've never seen one of this. It's fantastic. Oh, look at that. It, it, it is, it's hardly used at all, so there are one or two pieces still wrapped. Part number... 82 is... I think it's a threaded rod. It is a threaded rod. That must be... Is what that an is, inch? What are you threaded by? These are real engineering components. They're not... You don't have to understand their application in Meccano. You have to understand their application in life. That's what's so good about it. Why do they not make anything quite this exciting anymore? I mean, it is a very anachronistic system, isn't it? Well, it's a very old-fashioned toy. I remember somebody saying this to me once, that before the war, the world looked like Meccano. You had, you know, railway... You've, you've got it right. The principal thing is, Meccano is metal. Yes. Today's medium is plastic. Yes. It is mechanical. Today's medium is electronic. It's angular. Today's things are compact curves. Yeah. It's just, you take one of the bits and take it together and replace. These days, everything's replacement, bonded. Yes. It, so the is. whole thing is, is, is out of kilter with modern life, really. <laughs> So, Jim and I are in agreement. Meccano is brilliant, but it's looking a bit old-fashioned. But that doesn't mean it's irrelevant, because it doesn't matter how enthusiastically we embrace the digital age, the world still depends on machinery. Take, for example, the differential, which you'd find in any car. Now, it's almost impossible to explain to someone how a differential works, but if you make yourself one out of Meccano, is one that took me all night, you will understand it immediately. You will realise how it allows one wheel to go faster than the other when the car is going round a corner. You can sense the forces at work. You can feel them in the metal components. And you just don't get that with your Wii. The problem now is how to bring this box of bent metal into the 21st century. That's going to take something really big. I also need a suitable venue. That bit's quite easy, though. Hey. Liverpool was the birthplace of Meccano, and Meccano played its part in the building of Liverpool. As Meccano's popularity exploded throughout the world, so did production. The success of this toy was the result of sound engineering principles. By standardising things like hole spacing, shaft diameters and, well, the pitch of worm gears, Hornby ensured that Meccano could be endlessly dismantled and remantled to make an infinite number of models. And Bins Road is where Meccano was made. In the 20s and the 30s, it was the biggest toy factory in Britain, possibly even Europe. 
and in its heyday it employed 2,000 workers and about 400 or 500 staff, marketing and salespeople. It was it was a sort of cathedral to benign commerce than the Carnet factory. Is this it?